Example 2 in 2.7 is this right here. Given the function f of x equals 1 over x, use the definition of a derivative to find f prime of x. And over here on the right in the blue, we have the definition of f prime of x. It's the limit as h goes to 0 of this um, f, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And so simply what we do is we're going to plug this value of f of x into that definition and simplify and evaluate the limit. And so um, x plus h for that function is 1 over x plus h minus f of x, which is just 1 over x um, over h. And again, just to remind you, we're trying to evaluate just limits. All these are limits. We know all way too much about limits at this point, and the biggest issue is what's happening down here with this h. We really want to find a way to cancel that h because the fact that h goes to 0. So I'm going to treat this like any complex fraction. I'm going to add the numerator, or the fractions in the numerator together. And so we have the limit here as h goes to 0. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this first fraction by x on top and bottom, and the second fraction by x plus h on the numerator and denominator. And what I would get then is uh, x over x times x plus h minus x plus h over x times x plus h. And this h down here in the denominator is still hanging out. I'm then going to add, subtract those two fractions together in the top. So the limit as h goes to 0. Um, don't forget that when I subtract this, uh, I need to distribute this negative through the second fraction. So I'm going to get x minus x minus h. And uh, the x's cancel just to give me a negative h on top and then x times x plus h in the bottom, and then I still have that over h down here. Um, so now, um, importantly how I think about this is I think of the top as one fraction being divided by h. But dividing by h here is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over h, and so I'm going to write it like that. So times 1 over h, and then I can do what I was hoping I would do. I'm going to cancel out these h's. Usually, after you cancel out that h, the limit is easy to take. Let's see if that is the case here. I'm going to get negative 1 over x times x plus h. And now, I can use direct substitution because I don't have any domain issues when I plug in 0. So I'm going to use direct substitution here. Uh, and so what this limit becomes is negative 1 over x times x plus 0, which that simplifies down to negative 1 over x squared. So what I just found is if f of x equals 1 over x, f prime of x, the first derivative of f of x, is negative 1 over x squared.